Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. I see a good morning from Columbia, Maryland. It's very close to where I'm based. <laughs> Thank you for being here for the second day of our um, 1619 Education Conference. Good morning from Charlotte. Good morning from Miami. Good morning from Allentown, PA. Good morning from the land of the Lenape. Cokeville, Tennessee. New York, Harlem, hello. Hello, Cleveland and Detroit. Good morning from Brazil. Thank you for making time to be on here today. <laughs> A lot of New Jersey. We got Jersey City, Morristown, Temple. Good morning from Pender School District, Bucks County. Good morning from Mississippi, the mountains of California. We've got two, two from Brazil. <laughs> Well, I appreciate all of you making time to be here this morning, um, and I'm very excited to share um, some opening remarks with you, some framing for what our work is going to continue to look like uh, with our 1619 education programming, um, and just kick off a really great day like yesterday. Uh, my name is Donnelly Jamna. I'm one of the senior program managers on the Pulitzer Center K-12 education team. And I'm also the manager of our 1619 education programs. As I said, I'm gonna have just some opening remarks. We have an announcement about a new initiative we're launching today. Um, and then there will be some time if you have questions for me, questions about the program, or you're just curious about where to learn more. Uh, before we transition into a really um, great learning workshop that will be led by 1619 Project contributor, Kimberly Anise Henderson. Um, so in terms of curating those questions, sharing those questions, you can utilize the Q&A function at any time. If you have a question that you want answered, we have some um, Pulitzer staff panel support that will be helping to curate those for me. Um, you can also share questions in the chat if you would like. And just a note that your registration link is going to be the same for the entire conference. So after this webinar or after this session closes, you'll be able to rejoin the next with the same link. Hey, I know some of you were here yesterday and have um, heard a bit about the Pulitzer Center mission, but for those maybe joining us for the first time today, our mission at Pulitzer Center is to champion the power of stories to make complex issues relevant and inspire action. We believe that journalism can be a key element for mobilizing society and that people and communities who actively engage with systemic challenges will find solutions together. These are our current focus areas, issue areas for our journalism that we're supporting at the Pulitzer Center, global health, climate and environment, peace and conflict, information, and artificial intelligence, and human rights. And that human rights focus area um, has a focus on racial justice for us, which um, ties into the work that our education team has been doing with the 1619 Project. Now our K-12 education teams programs, um, our hope is that they are cultivating a more curious, informed, empathetic, and engaged public. We try to connect teachers and journalists with these stories that we're talking about, these global news stories, and also the journalists who cover them. That our education programs include um, the journalism that Pulitzer is funding. So thousands of articles, photos, and videos on these issues. 
lesson plans and student contests. So lesson plans that are written by Pulitzer Center staff, but also our teacher education partners um, and contests for students that are engaging with this journalistic work. We also have a virtual journalist visit program um, where a journalist can come speak to your students about the work they do, the focus issue area they're working on, um, workshops for, stu for students and teachers, and teacher fellowship programs. So you can learn more about our K-12 education programs at PulitzerCenter.org. Um, and I think um, we can also share some of these links in the chat as we're going. The theory of change behind those programs is that by connecting students and teachers with these news stories and journalists, we're strengthening critical thinking, media literacy, communication, and connection. Um, and that ties in really well to the work that we have done with our 1619 programs and initiatives. Um, so I know you all have heard a lot about the Education Network program this weekend because we're celebrating the culmination of the third cohort of that program. But we've also, in the almost five years we've been working with the 1619 Project, um, had higher education initiatives, like our law school initiative, um, which you can find on the site. And we've worked with after school education partners. We've had um, webinar series, uh, um, speaking events at schools and conferences, multiple different programs and initiatives that are happening under the 1619 umbrella. The Education Network was our response to feedback from educators about the need for support, guidance, and networking opportunities as they implemented 1619 into their classroom. Um, we, it consists of cohorts of educators that were working in um, all schools, working also with adults and youth in jails, prisons, and detention facilities. And the hope was that collaborating together to create these resources and show what strategic implementation, effective implementation looks like, um, would allow not just the students of the educators within the program, but also anyone who's utilizing these resources on our site to engage um, authentically and critically with United States history and just the world around them. Um, so this program has been, it's grown into this network with such sustained impact. And um, you'll see here are um, just a few data points from each cohort year, the number of educators um, taking part in the cohort, the number of teams, and um, just states that we're covering each year. And also on the right, I have an example of some of the ways that our alumni have continued to build on their program. Um, so at the top, you see Identity Resource Screening Tool for Educators. That is a resource you can access on our 1619 site, but this is a team from our first year who in doing their work with Born on the Water and in thinking about how do we responsibly help students engage with a history that they may not be connected to or an identity that they may not be connected to, um, our elementary school students, how do we make sure we do this in a way that centers the humanity of the people we're talking about, um, that centers the humanity of those who were enslaved? And so these teachers did a lot of great work both during their cohort year, but then in the years following, and they've created a tool that educators can use with 1619 material, but also with any material um, where you're engaging elementary school students in this type of work. Thank you, um, Kendra, for sharing that in the chat so folks can take a look at it. And then the second example here is from an educator also from our first year cohort, whose work has now been um, built upon and included in the African-American history curriculum in the Philadelphia School District. So all students that are taking African-American history will be engaging with the lessons that she curated um, through her other professional development and then through her work with Pulitzer Center and this program. And so we're We've been really inspired by the ways that um, teachers have taken what was just sort of a, a small seed we were planting or an opportunity we put forward and um, really created new visions for where it could go. Those visions for impact um, have been the inspiration for the newest initiative that we're announcing today, 
our 1619 Education Impact Grant. And so as we continue to publish the work from the network program, as we continue to think about ways to engage new teachers with that work um, and to help it reach new audiences, we're also taking um, the growth that we've seen in the program and the ways that we've seen our teachers continue to build in that program and using that as part of our vision um, moving forward. So I'll tell you more about what this impact grant entails um, and what we're hoping that folks um, are thinking about for those that want to apply. So applications will be due um, in mid-April. And this grant we're thinking is an opportunity to fund collaborative and innovative projects that engage educators and students and lead to sustained impact beyond the individual classroom level. That's really the main distinction between um, the network program and this new grant initiative. Um, we're in network, we're working with teachers. Um, sometimes, again, those grew to school-wide initiatives. That was sort of the visioning um, that moved us here, but we're hoping that schools, teachers, um, education programs are looking into some of those projects. Some of the projects-based learning um, opportunities we'll be learning about from our network members later today, and some that you heard about yesterday, and use those as models for the new types of projects we'll be um, funding moving forward. And this is a two-tiered approach. So we'll be funding both individual schools, programs, or collaborative projects. Um, maybe if there's you know, multiple small groups working together um, who are reaching an estimated, uh, or at least 500 um, students. And we have people here because we're open to folks working with both students and educators. Um, you saw yesterday, we had our working with pre-service teachers panel. And um, yeah, that we know that doing this work amongst educators and helping educators engage with the history that they may not have been taught either has been a really essential part of this. So yeah, we're open to funding both projects that are working directly with K-12 students, but also projects that are working with the educators that teach them. And then tier two is for projects that have an estimated reach of at least 2000. And so if you, as your thinking through your project um, or wanting to know sort of which tier should we go into, which we apply to, you can always reach out um, to our 1619 at pulitzercenter.org email, but hopefully this gives some framing there. And we're inviting education professionals that are going to utilize at least one resource from the 1619 project to improve the awareness and critical thinking of students or educators about the legacies of slavery in the contemporary United States and the contributions of Black Americans to every aspect of United States society, um, and projects that equip students and or educators to take action and make change that advance racial justice. So what do I mean when I say including the 1619 project? Um, I hope folks through this weekend have come to see that there's lots of different um, resources within the project. It has become this expansive work over the last five years, and there's lots of ways to sort of utilize it in your programming. The 1619 Project started with a print magazine issue in the New York Times Magazine that had 18 essays by leading journalists and historians and 15 poems and short stories that were inspired by key moments in United States history. There were also two photo essays um, as a part of that publication and a print broadsheet, which is a really great resource. We'll look at an excerpt from in just a minute, um, analyzing how slavery was taught. There's also a kid section of the publication um, with a really great sort of infographic that you can use to pique student interest and to start these conversations about some of the data points that they may not be aware of concerning um, slavery in the United States. There's a five episode podcast. Our keynote yesterday was with some contributors to the podcast episodes, Jude and Angie Provost, but there's um, five parts to that. And, and there's also the two books we've been speaking of, the book anthology, A New Origin Story, and the children's book, One on the Water. 
And of course, last year, the six part docuseries that was um, done by Hulu. The creative works, we had a panel with some of the contributors who create some of the contributors to the creative works in the book anthology um, yesterday. And so we looked at the moments in history that they were considering and the works that they created. Those that attended the panel were able to hear um, some readings of the works that were really lovely. And if you were not able to attend the panel, but you are registered here, you will receive that video. So you can go back and, um, and view that. But I will try playing. Um, this is a recording of Rita Dove reading her contribution, just so folks can kind of see the and experience the um, artistic element here and consider how maybe this is one of the resources you utilize in your project. I don't know. Never mind. It'll be posted, I think. I hope. Hold still, Carol, or else this sash will never sit by. I think. Is the sound working clearly? Can I get feedback on that in the chat? Okay. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> now it is. All right, I'll restart. Youth Sunday. This morning's already good. Summer's cooling, Addie chattering like a magpie. But today we are leading the congregation. Ain't that a fine thing? All in white, like angels, they'll be sighing when we appear at the pulpit and proclaim, open your hymnals. Addie, what's the page number again? Never mind. It'll be posted, I think. I hope. Hold still, Carol, or else this sash will never sit bright. There. Now you do mine. Almost 11. I'm ready. My, don't we look. What's the word the Reverend used in last Sunday's sermon? Oh, I got it. Ethereal. Um, so we just really, we love playing that recording. Um, it's, it's obviously a sad event that Rita Dove is capturing here, but so beautifully. And it's one of the ways that our teachers have been able to engage students in the hard history is these moments that the projects create for empathy building for the creative works and for channeling, um, you know, everything students are processing in a creative way. There are the essays within the project that um, each deal with a specific legacy of slavery or specific part of our society that's being touched in this way. Um, that includes traffic, that includes the um, criminal justice system, healthcare, even music. And so these are things that students are generally interested about and excited to dive into. Um, these are the podcast episodes we mentioned. And then here's some examples of the um, artifacts you'll find in the print broadsheet where you have an artifact um, here and then information on the side about its connection to um, the lives of enslaved people. And on this slide here, you see the example of the K-8 resource, some of the data points that it's helping students dive into and some of the questions that um, students will be asking. So that's just a brief overview um, about the resources within the project. I can go back to the slide um, about what we fund if folks wanna look at that more um, closely. And I believe Rita shared the announcement for the 1619 Impact Grant in the chat. 
Um, but then I also wanted to know for those who are looking at all these resources and saying, I still don't know where to start. I think I still need more time or I'd like to engage with this further before I'm able to launch a project. Um, we will still have those opportunities for learning and engaging um, the webinar series that we do, opportunities to connect with us at different conferences. And of course, um, you can reach out to us if you are interested in having a workshop or something hosted for your school or district. Um, so do know that, that um, those levels of engagement are available. And of course, yesterday in the opening remarks shared by Nicole Hannah-Jones, um, she shared an opportunity through her 1619 Freedom School for elementary educators that are wanting to implement a literacy curriculum that they are doing. And so that's another opportunity for sort of the um, cohort style engagement, if that's what folks are interested in as well. So this is the end of my um, presentation. I'll look now to see if there have been any questions curated for me in the chat. And we'll just hold a couple minutes from that before we transition into our opening workshop. Right. It looks like we had a few for, um, folks raise hands, but we haven't gotten their questions. Here's one. Can we get a copy of the slides in the re recording? Um, yes, uh, uh, Jessica, we will send out um, a recording of this and then um, we've dropped in the chat the page for the grant announcement so that folks can go ahead and bookmark that. Um, and, you know, maybe after reading through more closely or talking with your um, teacher community, reach back out to us. And yes, Joanne, the links in the chat will be captured. And also I believe they're provided in our audience guide. Um, for the day, which we can reshare. I don't know if we've shared that yet, but um, for each panel today in the guide, you'll have links to relevant resources and um, some of the material folks are discussing. So we'll we'll get that. Oh, great. Thank you. There are always more opportunities for learning after today. Like I said, um, we will be continuing with the webinar series and things that we do. And so one great way to stay up to date on that is signing up for our K-12 education newsletter, um, where we're announcing always um, opportunities to engage with this program and our other education programs. And um, Okay. Are there any resources for ways to get people in our communities on board to apply? Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question. You know, if you are reaching out to folks in your community and there are follow-up questions, um, you can always reach out to our 1619 email box um, and we'll get the that email in the chat for you all. Um, but I also think taking time to go through the um, website with them and going through some of the different projects that are there as an example for what other schools have done, what that's looked like. You all will receive the recordings from this weekend and so maybe sharing a few um, any part of those recordings that you think is really related to your school context or relevant to your school context. I know that a lot of our teachers that we've worked with through the education network are always happy to connect with other educators. Um, so if there's a specific um, teacher or school that you may want to connect to, um, we can always check with them to see if that's a possibility. But I do hope you'll open those conversations and we're happy to um, engage with, you know, folks about their specific ideas or what questions they may have. 